Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is <laughs> not a good morning. Sometimes the medicine for my coughing works, and sometimes it really doesn't. Um, so I think I'm okay if I keep this to a few minutes. But before I start, uh, first kill graphic novel link is in the description. So um, I'm actually a little bit tense right now because Cartoonist Kayfabe just uploaded this review of the last issue of the Marvel run of G.I. Joe and um, <sighs> tread carefully. That's all I'm saying. Tread lightly because I have read that issue probably a hundred times. Um, I'm getting to the point where I can't remember if I've reviewed something or not. It's been six years and 4,000 videos, but I need to uh, review it, all of it. But um, if they pull their shtick where they just guess the story and they skim it, I'm going to freaking lose it. Like you, It took me a while, but I finally realized that these guys don't now, and I don't think they ever actually read comics. Like, yeah, they would sometimes read them, but like they didn't treat them like you would treat a novel. Uh, they treat them just like, oh, check it out. Ghost Rider threw his chain through that guy's chest. Like, they're still at that level. Like, they never progressed above that level. So, um, they already pissed me off with the way they reviewed Death Blow Wolverine like a month or two ago, where it was clear they read like the first few pages and then just skimmed and guessed. <laughs> I did, <laughs> I did this, I did this uh, video like last week where I said, is Perch a billionaire? Not really thinking he is, but maybe he is. Are cartoonists kayfabe illiterate? Like, can they read? We're just assuming they can read. Maybe they can't read. So anyway, this is going to be kind of a lighthearted uh, video. And then right before I was about to get ready, I saw this. So I'm kind of tense. So this is not a review of Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers number one. Toot toot. Some kind of drug reference, I believe. Um, but I do need to reread these and um, uh, review them. I had uh, a phase, a Freak Brothers phase back in the 1990s. I had uh, a friend who was a few years older and uh, I had not really seen stuff like this at comic book stores. They would have it at head shops where you uh, buy uh, <laughs> marijuana paraphernalia. But um, uh, they also just had book sections and just like I don't know, it was kind of like Spencer's Gifts before Spencer's Gifts existed. But um, uh, I used to buy these and uh, uh, my friend would always t uh, tell me, it's like, you know, the guy who made these, he's rich. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, rich by the definition of a broke guy in 1997. Sure, I'm sure he was rich. Um, but uh I was thinking about a resource uh, that we had lost in that when I started collecting comics, basically everyone who ran a comic book shop, this was late 1980s, looked like either Cheech and Chong or Cheech or Cheech or Chong or one of the fabulous furry freak brothers. These were older hippies. Of course, I was a teenager, so somebody old was somebody in their 30s. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's, it was like that on the East Coast, but in the Midwest and Texas, it was, to a man, cranky hippies. Now, hippies have a weird, a weird rap because hippie is often used as a way to say liberal or left wing. But there were all kinds of hippies. There were communist hippies there were left-wing hippies there were uh there were actually like conservative i i guess they would be more libertarian kind of pre-libertarian hippies and that's what a lot of these comic book shop owners were back in the day they uh they liked fabulous furry freak brothers but they realized selling that to teenagers in the late 1980s was probably going to be difficult so what they did is they sold whatever was popular. 
Frank Zappa has this great uh, clip from an interview. It's about four minutes long, so it's too long to show. I will uh, summarize it. And he said that uh, when he got into the music business, the executives were his dad's generation. They didn't understand the hippie experimental music. So they were initially very resistant to it. Then they kind of tried it a little bit. It sold well. And they said, we don't understand this. We don't understand this audience, but it sells well. So (coughs) let's sell some more of it. And then that did well, and it just kept doing well. So Frank Zappa was like, hey, I'm sitting there. I'm this hippie in my 20s talking to guys who look like my dad. And they're just saying like, hey, when's the next album coming out? He said the problem was when people his age became the executives. Because then they started deciding you don't produce what the uh, customer wants, you produce what they should have, regardless of whether they want it or not. Uh, So my last store that I went to regularly was run by, once again, a cranky old hippie. Uh, As I got older, they also got older. And um, I've got to say, like, I can't imagine, if I would go into that store now, a few years later, like, what's he going to (laughs) say? (coughs) <coughs> like he's like oh come on in yeah we just got the new comics in for this week we got uh we got gay shit we got uh homo shit we got queer shit we got lgbt coming out of our ears no pun intended uh the women look like they all had their uh tits chopped off and the men i would assume they had their dicks chopped off but i know they weren't because they can't stop sucking each other off I wish my ex-wife liked to suck dick as much as Superman does. Here's where Heidi McDonald is like, I don't know what this shop owner is talking about. Clark Kent is currently Superman, and he has always been portrayed. We're not talking about Clark Kent, bitch. We're talking about Jonathan Kent. We're talking about an industry that destroyed itself from the inside slowly over time, but not that much time. I was just thinking about the destruction of the American comic book industry. That was not like, oh, nobody noticed the old bridge was being eroded. Like, literally, between me and a couple of my friends, there are 20,000 videos delineating the destruction of the American comic book industry. I had a friend who said something brilliant. He said the next cope that these Heidi McDonald types are going to do is when a comic store closes, they're going to say, well, that comic book store didn't even sell a lot of comics. They had a very limited amount of their square footage selling comics, so we really shouldn't count them as a comic book store, which is just the most insidious thing. You have comics that are so unsellable that comic book stores sell less of them, then they go out of business, and then they get blamed or gaslit or whatever. Um... But uh, I just try and put yourself like in the position of a comic store owner in 2023. Like, what are you supposed to say? It's like, hey, uh, when someone's like, oh, hey, who's the hot new writer? You're like, uh, I can't name any from the last five years. But about six years ago, Donny Cates started getting into the mainstream. And, and that went pretty well for, for a while. And now he has to keep going to uh, rehab because he got in a car accident. That was it. That was the only thing that happened. He got in a car accident and that's why he disappeared for a year. There wasn't another reason. But uh, yeah, like I cannot imagine being that old cranky hippie. And the ones who were... In their 30s, when I started collecting comics, they're now in their 60s or 70s. And a lot of them are just closing up to shop. Now, the thing is, if you read uh, towards the end of the article, they will often mention trying to sell the shop. And nobody wants to buy it. Can you imagine, like, jumping in to the game of selling comics right now? 
<laughs> How do you do it? How do you get people excited? There's not even the equivalent of those uh, hippies in their 40s in the early 1990s saying, I don't understand this Rob Liefeld thing, but it sells. I hate this shit, but it sells. Yeah, I ordered 100 copies for the store and I wish I would have ordered 200 because they are all gone already. There's nothing like that. There's no excitement. How are you going to sell nothing? <laughs> hey there, you look like a savvy customer. How would you like to buy some gay shit? I don't know. Who's gay right now? Is Spider-Man gay? Oh, how many? Uh, are all the Spider-Mans gay? Are all the Spider-People gay? When I talk to my normie friends, many of whom collected comics for decades, whenever I say like, oh, did you hear about... And they'll be like, okay, who's gay now? Like, even the most normie normies know the only trick that the comic book industry has, and they just keep pulling the same rabbit out of the hat, just turn someone gay. They're like, who's gay now? Is Daredevil gay? Is, uh, is Hulk gay? Is Hulk gay and in a loving relationship with General Thunderbolt Ross? I always want to say to these people who just obsessively turn every character gay that they can. What character is just definitely not gay? Like, it would never happen and it's just not possible. Because they won't do that. Because to them, every character, it's like J. Jonah Jameson. More like gay Jonah Jameson. Cable? Mm, more like Gable. Gambit? More like Gamebit. Uh, Aunt May, that one's too easy. Aunt Gay, come on, come on, come on. Just keep, just keep throwing, throwing those slow pitch softball. I can hit them out of the park all day long. But uh, yeah, um, we are uh, losing our most valuable resource, which is old cranky hippies who sell whatever people want to buy. The problem is that people don't want to buy anything from the mainstream anymore. I saw a lot of pushback to Mark Millar's idea of massively increasing, uh, uh, what is it called? Profits, I'm blanking on the name, for sales over 60,000. And <coughs> it was for lots of different reasons. But the main problem is how do you, again, unpop a balloon, and then put not just any gas, but the gas that was formerly in the balloon back in the unpopped balloon. How do you do that? In my mind, it is impossible. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I remember when Donny Cates got popular, every cranky hippie in Texas was pushing the shit out of Donny Cates, and it was it was selling quite well. And then he got in a car accident. Yeah, that was the only thing that happened. But anyway, before I go, first kill graphic novel. And if somebody watches this, I'm going to watch it anyway, but oh, I've always gone pretty light on these guys. If these guys fuck this up, It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. They're, they are already on my shit list for how they reviewed a book. I love Death Blow Wolverine. And they didn't even read the entire story. It was only two issues. They read like half of the first issue. And then they just guessed. Oh, check it out. <laughs> Bro. Uh, uh, <coughs> the Hulk just punched that dude through two buildings. Like... I would not say they are insightful when it comes to character and story. They are quite good at uh, critiquing art, but uh, I think it's because they only see comics as essentially art books, not actual narratives. Anyway, before I go, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.